Hey, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording. And uh, today I want to go over something that a lot of people had been asking for, which is how to get these effects that I did in Time to Go, uh, which was a jam video from 2015. Um, specifically these little LED effects, these little sweepy things that are going here. So we're going to dive into how that works. Yeah, let's let's do that thing. So uh, I'm working in Premiere. Um, I have a couple different sequences going on. There's the main edit sequence, which is all of the performance stuff. And that's this. And uh, this includes the kaleidoscope clips, which we'll go into in a bit. And it also includes these interface clips. Um, there is a sequence of all of these LED looking effects, these weird little atmosphere things. And then there's a final recursive sequence, which includes color correction on the, uh, the final piece, which I will turn on right here, um, using uh, Magic Bullet Looks, which I don't really use quite as much anymore now that Lumetri Color is standard in uh, Premiere, and Anamorphic Matte to make it look more cinematic. And finally, the LED layer up here, which is what we're calling those little sparkly things. And that lives up up here. Uh, with transparency, um, which I'll show you how we got with a uh, like a damaged TV effect going on, which is partly how it gets a little bit more glittery. Gl an extra sort of like glitter and sweep thing going on there is from a damaged TV effect, which you could do in After Effects if you wanted. Um, there is some good ways to do that. Uh, I was working in Premiere pretty much exclusively around the time that I shot this. I didn't really spend a lot of time in After Effects to do this kind of work. So I was really dependent on third-party plugins. So what I'm going to show you uh, uses a lot of third-party plugins, but you don't necessarily need these if you find a way to do it in AE, which uh, I believe there is probably lots of ways. But we'll show you how we got here and you can figure out how you might want to do it in After Effects if you want to do that. So I just dropped a color mat, just a blank gray color mat down here on the uh, video one channel of this LED sequence so that we can see a little bit of what's going on here. And uh, let's dive into what these are. So let's turn off all the effects and I'll show you what this is. Um, a long time ago, Brian and I on one board they decided to shoot food coloring being dropped into a glass beaker. We uh, got some food coloring and we got glass beaker and we got a macro lens and we just dropped food coloring into the beaker uh, filled with water and filmed it. And that's what's going on here. I've obviously rotated this 180 degrees, um, but here's our original clip. Very pretty, right? So pretty. So the first thing that we did do with this is turn on this color key here and uh, let's go ahead and rotate it back. Color key is going to allow us to take that background, that off yellow white background and turn it into a transparency. And that's gonna be necessary for us to be able to drop it on top of another clip. Um, all we want to really focus on is the ink portion of it. So if you're not familiar with what keying is, um, I'm sure you're familiar with what green screens are. Uh, I hope you are. Um, <laughs> that's about as far as I can take this back. But basically you tell a piece of a, a plugin or a piece of software to look at a specific color. And I have a little eyedropper thing going on here. And you say, I want this color to go away. I want this to be transparent. And you click and like magic, uh, <laughs> all the time, hundred percent like magic, you get a key, uh, you get this transparency. Now this edge here is the vestiges of what we had. Um, there because I have chosen to use um, some feathering, uh, which is what is going to soften or sharpen that key. And I chose to use a little feathering like that. Most of the time, if you were a professional and you actually needed to pull a key, like I just did, this would be completely unacceptable. But we are not trying to get a super clean key. We're just trying to get rid of the background and create a texture that we can then process more. Um, I then applied these RGB curves, which is a sort of color correction thing. Um, it allows us to change highlights and dark midtones, the whole range of tones, uh, either in Luma or in RGB. Boop, boop, boop. Um, right now we're just affecting the, uh, the brightness. We turned the brightness highlights way up, kind of clipped them up there because I wanted it to be a glittery bright thing on top of everything. And then finally, the thing that turns it from ink or food coloring into, um, into what we've seen is this uh, Boris Continuum 
complete effect called LED. And like I said, I think you could probably get this in After Effects pretty easily using a number of tools um, built into After Effects. Like I said, at the time I was sh using a lot of third-party plugins in Premiere because I didn't want a round trip to After Effects, but um, now with dynamic linking and all that stuff, it's a lot easier. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm using a plugin that's not just standard to, to Premiere, but basically what it's doing is creating little um, little squares all over the screen. And as the, uh, the video passes through them, um, we see it uh, squared LED like this. And you can change the LED size to really big or really small. Really small, really big. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down my display resolution here so we can actually preview this. So we actually used both in the video. Sometimes we use really big chunks, sometimes we use really small chunks, and each one gives you a bit more of a, a different effect. Like obviously around, you know, smallest, we, it's very clear that this is like what it started out as. You know, it's, it's very clear that it's food coloring. But as we turn it up and the video passes through it, it's kind of like sampling uh, a section and, and applying maybe an average of those pixels and that LED section to it. And I really like this effect. I think it's really cool because to create this programmatically as opposed to using a organic source, uh, I think would be challenging. Um, but the combination of a clever source material and uh, an, a plugin that's not really meant to do this exactly gives us a really cool effect. So that's what's going on there. Um, we'll just go ahead and review. We have food coloring being dropped into a beaker full of water. We have a color key that's keying out the background. We have curves to increase the, uh, the brightness of it. And then we have this LED effect, which is sampling based on the LED size little pieces of the, the frame and, and turning them into squares. And if we go through, you'll see that we've taken multiple clips. Uh, some of this actually is, is smoke. Um, it's, not, it's not ink, so there's some smoke. But the idea, the idea behind it remains the same. We just drop this effect on there and we get this kind of cool square thing. And you can, um, you can also change the, uh, the spacing of the LEDs themselves which is useful in some cases if you wanna spread them out across the screen. And that's what this gap function does. So if they're really close, you can see up here, it's a very small gap, but if you increase the gap, they're gonna be farther away. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Lots of ink, lots of smoke, and clever placement of the, uh, the clips in the frame. So that gets dropped on top of our final piece here. Drop them over the anamorphic mat um, to sort of break the frame. Um, anamorphic mats down here. I just liked, I, I tried putting them within the anamorphic mat and I felt like they didn't really have the same kind of effect, the same kind of power. So I let them break the mat. Let's go over kind of uh, real quick what happened here. Um, basically this was a lot of video uh, processing and then recapture through the DSLR. I shot Ableton's interface um, with my DSLR. Shot the screen, uh, the computer screen. You can see we got some moiré here. Um, you know, because of the lens and aperture, we got some um, depth of field focus stuff going on, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to capture the interface playing along with the music, but I wanted it to be organic and have this sort of like glowy screen feeling. First step, we apply some RGB curves. Um, I shoot, when I shoot on my Canon, I shoot uh, using a profile called ProLost Flat. Um, it's basically just uh, a normal picture style that you've taken the saturation and contrast and in-camera sharpening way down so that when you want to bring it into your editing program, you have a lot of latitude for grading, for color grading. So um, one of the things that generally you have to do with super flat footage is apply what you call an S-curve. And that's what's going on right here. This is an S-curve. Um, that drops the uh, darks darker and uh, makes the highs higher. Increases the contrast of a very low contrasty thing. So we have that. And then we use uh, a kaleidoscope plugin. This is from um, Continu Boris Continuum Kaleid as well. After Effects has a kaleidoscope plugin. 
Um, and I like it and I use it a lot. Um, but I said at the time I was very dependent on Premiere and third-party plugins. So that's why we're in here. I would do this in After Effects in a second if I had a choice again. So I took the Ableton interface and I shot it like this and I dropped the Kaleidoscope plugin on it. And then I automated the rotation of the Kaleidoscope plugin. I love doing this with interface stuff. I'm, I couldn't do it all day. Uh, I've done it with the OP1 uh, interface. I've done it with this, obviously. I am a huge sucker for kaleidoscopic mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I love the way it looks. That's just, it's my, it's my thing right now. It's what I've been using for all the OP1 um, song final cover art stuff too. So after I did that, um, I wanted to add another layer to it and uh, we'll go ahead and undo all this so we can get that clip back at the top. This was the final result. So what I did was I took this clip right here and I exported it and brought a whole bunch of these interface light clips that have been kaleidoscoped into, um, into VLC on my, on my laptop. And I went into a bathroom and turned off the lights <laughs> and I shot the laptop screen from various angles. So that's what you're seeing here as well. Like this was a good example of it, but basically it's just like, take the clip, put it on a laptop, play it back and shoot it either like dead on like this or in some, or like the case of the clip that we were just looking at, shoot it from an angle so that you get um, the depth of field uh, blur and stuff like that. So uh, throughout here, there's a bunch of that um, clips that have been uh, affected either with kaleidoscopes or um, there's a Boris effect called cube, which uh, is affecting this clip right here and then go and shoot them in a uh, dark room to get, you know, that screen look <laughs> for lack of a better term. And of course this, this uh, depth of field, which is really, really nice. The funny thing about this project is that all of this stuff, all of this, these effects were done to kind of mask what I considered a boring uh, actual performance. The actual performance aspect, this stuff, um, there was, there just wasn't anything really, really that engaging. I mean, I like some of the shots and everything, but I really wasn't happy with it as a performance. Um, in part, I think, because I was using Ableton to do a lot of stuff like trigger vocals and some drum clips, and I was just like, eh, it's not, it's not really exciting. So that's why we ended up with all these effects, uh, effect shots was to, to make you think it was exciting. I'm actually pretty happy with the results, regardless of why we ended up with them taking clips and doing weird things with them and then doing weirder things with them and then taking those weird things and putting more effects on them until uh, you don't even know what the heck the original source was. I do this with audio and I do it with video and I love doing it with both. So if you have any other questions about anything that you see on this channel in terms of technique or like how'd you do that or whatever, please ask. I love talking about this stuff. It's a fun way to talk with you guys about gear and technique and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you again soon. Say goodbye to Octocat. And don't forget to send him steaks and uh, flesh. <laughs> <laughs>